Welcome everybody, and welcome to January Week 3 Weekly Challenges Review, where I quickly go through the latest challenges and what cars I use, and offer you some car options for yourself if you haven't completed them yet, and at the least, my review at the end of this video of this week's races. The first race is the European Sunday Cup 400 at Alsace Test Course, and for this race I've chosen to drive the 1989 BMW M3. I have no upgrades on this car and it was still OP for this race, before the end of the first lap I got P1, and just like all the first races of the challenges, it was easy and done pretty quick. Now here coming to the finish line, with a substantial lead on the field and completing this race in under 3 minutes, quick, easy and over, just like that. The second race is the Japanese Clubman Cup 550 at Grand Valley South and I'm in a 1996 Sylvia FK's Aero. I have the minimal upgrades for this, just the sport upgrades, and I added the front, side, and rear skirts with the custom wing. This race was actually fun and a bit of a challenge. I steadily moved up the field, lap by lap, having to watch out for the AI when making passes. Majority of the field had some decent power compared to the Sylvia. Here in the third lap, I finally caught up to the leaders, but it still wasn't easy to get by them, they obviously had more power than me. As you see, I passed P2 but, he overtook me quickly on the straight. At this point, I wasn't sure if I had enough power to get the win, so my best chance was to get them on the turns, but with P1 taking off on me, I wasn't sure if that would be enough. A little further down the track, I was able to get by P2 on this bend, but was still unsure about catching P1, but on the final major turn, I was able to cut on the inside and get the position. Now here approaching the line, I was worried P2 would catch me and pass me with the power he has, but luckily I had enough of a lead to get the win and complete race 2, which took about 5 and a half minutes, and now ready for race 3. And that would be the World Rally Challenge at Catalonia Rallycross Layout, and I'm in the Honda NSX Group B Rally Car. I picked up a couple positions quick off the line going into the first turn. And then going into the second turn on the dirt, it turned into a little bumper car match. I almost got knocked out, but managed to hold it together and come out with a few more positions. Then after a couple more bumps and the jump, I got P4. Then on the U-turn I bumped my way into P3. Wasn't intentional. I don't have the best control with these rally cars as you see. But whatever, I got me P3. At the final turn, I bumped my way into P2. Then just a little further ahead, P1 went wide. We made contact. And I ended up putting him into the wall. Again unintentional. But I got myself P1. And with 8 laps I had to drive on point. Halfway through the race, I got a little lead on P2, but one major mistake and he'll catch up and even overtake me with ease. Going into the 6th, I slid into the wall, but luckily it wasn't a bad hit and I was able to keep control and the lead. And now at the end, slowly crossing the line with P2 right on my tail, I was able to keep it together and get the win. This race took 6 and a half minutes and was a challenge nonetheless. Fourth race is the American Clubman Cup 700 at Mount Panorama, and I'm driving the 2020 Corvette C8, and for this race I had to use traction, because this car has so much power and I'm still learning to drive without it. With all this power, I was able to move up the field very easily and quickly during the first lap, and right before the end of the first I got into P1 and it was clear sailing from there on. And after five laps, here at the finish, with a big lead on the field, this race was actually easier than I anticipated. It took me just over 10 minutes to complete in this OP car. The final race of week 3 is the Super Formula race at Watkins Glen Long Course, and I'm in the 2023 Toyota Super Formula, and again, I had to use traction for this race. This race was definitely not easy. It also has tire wear and fuel consumption. I'm driving on racing soft tires and fuel map set to 1, and I didn't actually need to pit in this race. I did move up the field pretty steadily, and by the fourth lap I found myself in P4, but P1, 2, and 3 did have a nice little lead on me, so I had some catching up to do. At the start of the sixth, 
I caught up to P2 and 3, and passed them in one swoop, but P1 still had some good distance on me. Coming to the end of the seventh lap, I caught up to P1 and made the pass on the outside, and there was no looking back till the finish line. In the tenth lap, my left side tires were completely done, but I didn't want to pit and lose P1, so I just drove a little conservatively the last two and a half laps. Now here at the end, finishing the final race in under 18 minutes and a half a second penalty but a big lead on the field, especially because they all had to pit, and three tires completely shot, a fun race but again not easy. And that wraps up another week of challenges, some good races, race 2 and 5 I'd say were the most fun, race 2 because the car wasn't OP and race 5 because we get to use the F1s, and they are always fun to drive. Race 3 I thought was gonna be more of a problem for me, because I'm just not good in rally cars, but the NSX had the power for me to bully my way through. Race 1 and 4 was just a sprint to the finish basically, I'm gonna have to look for a slower car for the future first races, since most have been very easy and lower HP cars, and race 4, I should have lowered the power on the Corvette to make it more fun and challenging. But all in all, a decent week of races. Hope you enjoyed, please like, comment and subscribe, your support is greatly appreciated, thank you and see you in the next one.